Hello, this is Wesley Fryer with Moving at the Speed of Creativity and Playing with Media. And in this screencast, I'm going to show you how you can create a subdomain for a website as an add-on slot. And let me first just begin by showing you some examples of what this looks like, then I'll talk about the requirements, and then I'll show you the steps. In some cases, you'll have a domain registered, like in this case, I have speedofcreativity.org as my primary blog site, and that's registered. And instead of setting up a new website by putting slash and then the, the name like learning signs um, after the address, I can set this up as a subdomain. And that's what I've done here with our family learning blog, which is learningsigns.speedofcreativity.org. I think in many cases this looks a little more professional if you're going to put this on a business card or a flyer or something like that. Uh, it, you know, functionally it's not going to, to probably be any different if you set up your website with a slash and then whatever address that you want. But I really think subdomains are cool, they look more professional, and uh, it, it's handy to do. And so in this case, however, I'm not going to be creating the, the uh, new website, the new blog on my, on my primary site. Um, I have kind of a special circumstance, and this may be something that you're going to want to do as well. I have registered the website playingwithmedia.com to go along with my ebook, and this site is hosted by the company posturus.com for free. Posturus doesn't charge me for this. I had to pay $12 a year for the domain, but Posturus doesn't charge me any hosting fees. However, as far as I know, and well, and I want to, I want to, I don't think you can set up a subdomain through with Posturus. Perhaps you can, but I want to use WordPress and uh, and set something up similar to what I've already done here on this website, which is share.playingwithmedia.com. So how do I do that? What do I need in order to do that? Well, first off, I'll point out the Wikipedia article on subdomain gives you a little bit of additional background about this. Um, and, and how this works. You're going to need two things to follow the procedures I'll describe in this screencast. You're going to need a web host, so a web hosting service that you pay to uh, host your content. Like I said, Posturus.com doesn't charge for that, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a custom installation of WordPress um, inside the subdomain, and so I've got to have a web hosting service in order to do that. The second thing that you're going to need, or that I recommend you have, is a domain name registrar, and many web hosts will register your domain names for you, but I have found, and I own a probably around, I don't know, not that many, like 15 domains. It's a good idea to register your domain with a different registrar, because sometimes you'll decide to change your web host, and it's nice to have your actual domain name registration separate so you can change your host and, and make those kind of changes. It's kind of a hassle when, when you've got the same web host uh, registering your domain. So anyway, it, if you can do that, it's good. If not, it, you can still generally work with your web host to get these kinds of changes made. So let's talk about the steps of what we need to do to make this happen. What I would actually like to do in this case is I'm wanting to create a new WordPress site that's going to go on the domain learn dot playingwithmedia.com and I'm going to put information about workshops that I'm going to share face to face and uh, via video conference and via podcast on this site. So I'm going to go to my cPanel website and cPanel it should come with your hosting account and there's all kinds of different things that you can do with your cPanel. I'm going to scroll down here under the domains area and I'm not going to just add subdomains because what I am going to be adding here um, is not a subdomain of my primary account. This is going to be from a different account, and so this is an add-on do domain. Now, on my hosting account, I actually am paying for a virtual private server, which is more expensive, and because of that, I have an unlimited amount of add-on domains that I can put. If I wasn't doing this, I want to say my particular web host charges like $40, uh, think, a year for an add-on domain. So this may not be a free process for you if depending on your web host and what what they what they do generally for a basic account they're going to charge for this so um, the the domain name here is going to be learn dot uh, playing with media dot com that is the domain name that I'm going to be using 
and in this case I'm going to specify um, the uh, I guess it's going to be the, the FTP username and then I'm going to put in a password that, that I'm going to be using. I am going to change the document root here instead of having public HTML I'm going to go ahead and take that out and the reason is I don't particularly want this to be accessible within my main hosting account I want this uh, and so by, by taking out this public HTML um, and specifying a different um, a different uh, address um, I can do that and I think that's better from a security standpoint so I'm just gonna this particular um, address is not going to be visible to, to the rest of the world now for the purposes of the screencast I'm gonna click on the password generator I'm gonna go ahead and um, copy this password and I'm, I'm gonna change this password after this screencast so hopefully somebody's not gonna want to be copying this and you know changing this but I'll I'm gonna go ahead and, and make a change um, to that after I uh, do this screencast. I'm going to click this button that says add domain and what that's going to do is it's going to um, it's going to it's going to add and, cre and create that domain. So now I have a directory here on my hosting account that will have these files for my new website that's going to be learn.playingwithmedia.com and I can use my file manager or I actually use the free program CyberDuck on my Mac to FTP file transfer my my WordPress files into that um, directory so I'm basically done here in cPanel but I need to do one other thing to make this particular address when people type it in learn.playingwithmedia.com go into that folder and that's going to be making an entry into my DNS account. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to switch over here to my web host. Uh, oh sorry, that's the wrong one. I'm going to switch over, switch over here to my GoDaddy account and um, it looks like huh, I've actually been logged out of my GoDaddy account so let me go ahead and log in And what I want to do is go to my domains that I have. All right, so I'm going to go to my account for my uh, entry for playing with media. And I'm going to go find the location where it talks about the DNS manager. And I'm going to launch my DNS manager. And what I'm going to do is create a new, I think it's called uh, a C name alias that is going to be mapped to um, my um, my host for my for my web host so this cryptic address here is the address that I use in DNS for my um, my web host so I got this address from my web host what I'm going to do is I'm going to click a quick add and so I'm going to add a new domain here and I'm going to put learn there because I want it to be learn.playingwithmedia.com and I'm going to tell it to redirect to that address and again that's something that you're going to get from um, your your host um, your hosting site in fact the, uh, there there are two DNS entries that I have to put in uh, because you have a, a primary and a backup DNS for your site and this is the primary uh, DNS entry for my main hosting site on speedofcreativity.org. So I'm going to go ahead and save the zone file. I'm going to click OK to save it. And it's going to take, um, it says, up to 48 hours for this to happen. Usually I found this happens pretty quick. I don't know why that is. But you can see here that I now have a new entry as a CNAME alias on my playingwithmedia.com DNS entry. And that is going to uh, my hosting account. So um, we can go ahead and test this now, but I don't think it's, it, I don't have anything in there yet. And so if I put learn.playingwithmedia.com and enter that, um, look at that. It, it already did. It's already resolving for me. It is an empty directory, an index that doesn't have anything in there uh, yet. So what I can now do is I can put my WordPress files, create my, my MySQL uh, database, and, and get all of that set up. 
So I hope that that has been helpful to you. Um, I know that is a technical process and, and it may just sound like Greek and you may not have any interest in it at all, but if you are someone who is setting up different websites and you're using the same domain, I really think setting a subdomain up like this um, is, is very nice and it's very professional and it's preferable to just having a, a, a slash and then a directory name after a website. And if, as long as you can access directly the DNS records in the, for the DNS registry for your site and uh, you've got access to cPanel, you uh, should be able to do this directly. But like I said, depending on the terms with your hosting account, um, an add-on slot may, may cost you some money. Uh, you know, 40 bucks a month was what it was costing me before I had my virtual private server. So good luck to you. And uh, although my book is definitely not quite focused on as many technical things as what I've talked about in the screencast, I would encourage you to check out my ebook, which is Playing With Media, Simple Ideas for Powerful Sharing. You can find that by simply going to the website playingwithmedia.com. And hopefully later on this evening, after I finish getting this WordPress site set up, you'll be able to go to learn.playingwithmedia.com and not only find out more about face-to-face -face workshops and video conferences that I offer on topics relating to media creation, but I'm also planning to have a series of podcasts, available video podcasts for download um, that you can get there as well. So good luck and have fun using your newfound skills of creating subdomains to um, create even more professionally looking uh, website, uh, at least domain names. And what you put in those websites, of course, is what will really determine the professionalism. But I hope this has been helpful. Good luck to you.